Shalom Aleichem, and welcome to Machem Leira on my smicha. Being that we're completing the halachas of, uh, of Schita on Shabbos, and Bayer on Shabbos, and some other uh, halachas of Hilcha Shabbos, and once before I already made a, a, a clip, a video, about the importance of going to Mikvah on Shabbos, that the Hasidim are very makbid, and even a hot Mikvah, which many had a problem with that. Um, I want to discuss two or three small little points about a mikvah on Shabbos, not necessarily the fact that you're going and it's quote unquote bathing. And then there is a, a typical discussions of a, a schita sar, how you dry, your, how you dry your body, how you dry your hair. What's about the wet, the towel getting wet. I want to talk about things that are relevant to the Simonim that we are learning now, and that is Burder and Schita. Uh, I, there's actually a, a whole other discussion if a person who was Tamei goes to the mikvah, it, it, you, you, you're sort of making a complete makeover. You're creating a new person. He was Tamei, tame, and now after he goes to the mikvah, he's Tar. Is that a form of Baina? But again, I'm going to try to zero in onto one or two minor details, which which you might not pay attention. You know, we all hear the great stories of the Hasidim who went on Mesir Snefesh for mikvah. And then what does it mean, Mesir Snefesh? They went in freezing cold Russia, uh, and freezing cold, they, and they, you know, we all, we're always told they were breaking the ice to get into the mikvah. So what happens if a person comes to mikvah, to a lake on Shabbos, and he sees a layer of ice, and he wants to break, he wants to go to the mikvah. So here it is interesting, the Alter Rebbe in Simen Shin Chof, Seif Yud Ches, the Alter Rebbe says, Mutar l'shaber ha-kerach lito mayim mitachtov, if you have ice somewhere, accumulated ice on a, on a, in a, on a food item, but you're just looking to get the food, it just froze on top, so you're allowed to break the ice on top, so you should be able to take take out the water from the bottom. By breaking the ice, you're not crushing it; you're just looking to remove it. You're not you're not in, uh, definitely not intending to create water. I the fact is you're crushing the ice. So he says, "In Mishim Shmira Sakerach, I'm breaking the ice. Ain Iser Klal." Shall call Dover Shatolish any disconnected thing. Sha'in a Kli, which is not considered a vessel. Ain Bishvirosoy Upsikosay Shum Isr Klau. So you're not crushing it for the water, so you're not you're not it's not a question of schita. Whatever questions might be when you crush ice. The fact that you're breaking it is not an issue, because breaking is only breaking something whole, something a Kali. Being that it's not a keli, breaking an ice doesn't is not an iser. But then the Alter Rebbe says that's if you're breaking an ice in a dover tolush, avo benohar oy be'er. If the white the ice accumulated in the well or the ice accumulated on a lake, kivon shehakerach mechuber lekarka. Since the the ice froze and it's attached to the ground, no aser l'shabre then you're not allowed to break it. Because then you're breaking a solid thing. Just like you're not, you're not allowed to break a keli, you're not allowed to break a mechubar lekarka. So these chasidim that came to the lake and they see it's frozen, were they allowed to break the ice on Shabbos? So from the Alter Rebbe, it's mashma, that we pass him like the Morgan of Ram, that you're not allowed to because it's it's stira, it's breaking something permanent. However, it is brought in achreinim, others who say, for those who are very makbid uh, and they want to go to the mikvah, uh, it's already accepted that you break the ice to get into the mikvah and Shabbos, the tzarech mitzvah, because it's a tzarech mitzvah, or those who are, don't have uh, water to wash their hands, uh, they would allow themselves to do it. Now, again, the Alter Rebbe is pretty, pretty, uh, uh, pretty clear not to do it. So the best thing would be, if you get into that situation, is to uh, ask a goy to do it, 
that would be even better. Now, this, this situation of breaking ice is not only ice for the mikvah. This could be even ice that, uh, that you know, you have, you have a cold window. It's, it's, in the, it's in the winter, and ice accumulates on the window. That's also a chubber. So to break that ice, you're breaking something mechubber. So that's something you have to be, you have to be aware of. All right, that's if, let's say you have no ice. It's a, it's a, it's a warmer day, and you want it, You go into the mikvah. So here, there is another, another discussion you have to, another issue you have to be aware of. You're going into the mikvah. You're going into the lake. There might be schmutz all around. So once before, I already discussed what could you do. Uh, to a dirty mikvah, are you allowed to scoop out the schmutz? It might be butter. Are you allowed to push it aside? And I want to add, if you're, you're going to a regular mikvah, there's a discussion, what happens if you see it's dirty and, you, and you're concerned of, about everybody else going in? Are you allowed to put in chlorine or those uh, those pods that you put in on Shabbos? Um, so the, easy, the interesting thing is that the Achreinim say that because, from one hand, uh, the, the people who are going in mikvah on Shabbos are going to go under any circumstance. And therefore, you're not really cleaning it for them. They're just, you're not really making a big separation. They're, they're going to go in, it's it's considered a usable mikvah for them as is. So just making it a little better. So that necess, that, that, that that would not be considered better because, uh, because uh, as is, it's good enough. And so that's a discussion if you're allowed to put in Chlorine. But I'm talking about you come to the lake and you see there is there is uh, schmutz floating around. Could you move it aside? So the Ktsaisa Shulchan writes, to move it aside is not a problem. Obviously, you have to be you have to be careful. Uh, um, if you're in a lake, you have a problem of moving things far Daladamas. But if you're in a mikvah and it's con- con- closed and you're just pushing things aside. Uh, the best would be you just push the water and there it and the water, the flow of the water pushes it aside. But because these are people who are going to the mikvah anyways, it wouldn't be a problem to push. That's not considered barrier.